Coming up on the Elon Phoenix Weekly. We travel abroad with the soccer teams. Make a brief appearance on the Golf Channel. And get the first look at the 2015 football team. All that and much, much more next on the Elon Phoenix Weekly. Good morning, and welcome to another edition of the Elon Phoenix Weekly. I'm Stephen Normington. And I'm Tori Baptist. Thanks for joining us on your ESPN2 local sports break. One distinction about Elon is its emphasis on experimental learning, study abroad, internships, and undergraduate research. Students are required to participate in meaningful experiences outside of the traditional campus setting. Student athletes are no exception, and as we'll see in today's show, a busy schedule of practices and games does not stop them from taking advantage of the incredible opportunities offered to them beyond the field and beyond the classroom. Women's golfer Emily Brooks is a prime example of this, taking full advantage of her Elon education and landing a dream internship. Going into freshman year, I was telling my dad, I was like, the ideal internship for me is to do a winter term internship at the Golf Channel so I can be in Orlando where it's warm and I can practice and at the Golf Channel because it's where I've always wanted the internship. And then, where we both said, like, yeah, that's a nice dream, but that'll never happen. This past winter, that freshman year dream became a reality when Emily Brooks received an unexpected phone call that she will never forget. It was actually after the final round of our final tournament and I played horribly. And I get a call from the talent recruiter at the Golf Channel. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And I kind of froze. I was like, oh, I don't, was not prepared for this. After arriving in Orlando, Brooks wasted no time immersing herself into the internship. They put me in the instructional department. So I worked with all instructional program. And I've taken so many lessons in my life. And I know a lot about the golf swing. And only one week in, Brooks was already making a difference. At the end of the first week, they're like, Emily, we're going to throw you in prompter next week. And I'm like, Oh gosh, like this is like the actual show, that this is what they're doing and I'm running prompter and all these people are reading a script at my own pace. So I was like, that's, that freaked me out and I'm, I'm over here like pre mentally preparing myself to work prompter. Like, you can do it Emily, you can do it. <laughs> the night before, freaking out. I ended up working it like the whole course of the month. Brooks felt comfortable with any task that she was given, largely due to the experience she had gained during her classes at Elon. So actually last fall I took sports broadcasting with Max Nagin and that was probably the best experience I've had in, far as, in terms of preparation for it. Um, so like I was, we were in the studio, we did all the studio run show, all kinds of stuff, did a live sporting event. And just knowing and knowing a little bit about how things work to help me tremendously. During the course of the internship, Brooks got the opportunity to meet many reputable professionals, including former PGA golfer and television host, David Faraday. I hear him in the background and I'm like, Oh my gosh, so I'm taking Snapchats like with David Faraday behind me and I'm like, this is so crazy. And so I go to the control room. Turns out I was talking to Faraday like while I was trying to change the script. I was talking to him and he like knew my name and all this stuff. And then afterwards I asked Bruce, I was like, can I meet him, get my picture with him? And he's like, yeah, of course. So I went out and like went out and talked to him for a little bit, got my picture. It was just awesome. And to top it all off, Brooks got her moment of fame even if only for a few seconds. I'm sitting in the control room about to work prompter and my supervisor is like, Emily, like, go out, go get in the shot. I'm like, what? Like, no. And he's like, yeah, yeah. So I basically handed Michael Breed a water bottle on TV and he handed one back to me. I don't really know why, but it was just kind of like funny because I was like just a little intern in the corner, so excited. And um, I was on, I had my uh, moment of stardom for about three seconds, but it, it was awesome and I loved it. Brooks hopes that her successful internship will inspire other student athletes to take advantage of the opportunities at Elon. I think this showed other people and it also showed myself that just like putting in the effort of being like a student athlete and putting in the time and working hard on one sport can open doors for you that you don't know, that didn't know they could be open. Look for Emily and the rest of the Elon women's golf team at the CAA Championship in Southport, North Carolina. 
Track and field is a team sport defined by individual all-stars. Meet Kimberly Johansson, Elon's standout runner in the 800 and 1500 meter races. Kimberly Johansson, a sophomore from Chelmsford, England, was named the Colonial Athletic Association Women's Track Athlete of the Week. It's such an honor to be CAA Athlete of the Week, obviously. Um, but I was surprised um, and happy, obviously. After running the 800 meters in two minutes and 11.16 seconds as runner-up at the Raleigh Relays, she set a new school record as well as posting a time good enough for first in the CAA. Kim has, has set for us four school records now from the 800 meters all the way up to the mile and has really just taken things to the next level this season. Initially, Kimberly did not know she set the school record, but when she found out, she was ecstatic. I, I did, actually didn't know um, I was cornered out after the workout and people were congratulating me and I was actually really confused. She not only excels in the 1500 meters, but she is just as good at the 800 meters and trains for them both differently. She transitioned well from cross country all the way to uh, the indoor season and then into the outdoor season. I definitely think my training is a lot more 1500 meter based. Um, but Coach Polk definitely puts in a lot of speed stuff, like enough speed stuff that I can get through a good 800 and get that in there, which obviously helps with my 1500. There is a particular race later in the season that Johansson is excited for most. Regionals, I'm really looking forward to regionals. Like, I'm looking forward to getting there. So I'd really love to run um, the 1500 meter school record. That would be another special moment for me. Um, and to do that several times would be great and get it as low as possible. Achieving top 25 overall in the NCAA East region is no easy feat. Johansson's time at the Raleigh Relays put her in this category. There's a lot of girls who are going to run fast still. Um, I would love to stay in the top 25 and if I can go to regionals in the top 25 that would be a great achievement for me as well. Um, the top 25, 25 is a small number when you think about it, when the 48 go, um, but to be in the top 25 in both events is, is great. And that brings us to today's history, featuring Elon basketball legend, Tommy Cole. This week in Elon sports history, we take a look back on the career of men's basketball legend, Tommy Cole. After a stellar high school career, Tommy Cole would join Elon's men's basketball team in 1968. Under the guidance of head coach Bill Miller, Cole became a standout for the Fighting Christians, winning two conference titles during his time at Elon. Cole received many honors in his time in maroon and gold, being recognized as All-Conference three times and as an All-American twice. Additionally, he was named Elon's Male Athlete of the Year in 1971 and 72. Cole holds Elon records for assists with 705 and field goals with 828. His career point total is second on the school's all-time list. For these accomplishments, Cole's signature number 34 was retired in 2009. It will forever hang from the alumni gym rafters, a tribute to one of Elon's greatest basketballers. And that's this week's look into Elon sports history. Don't go anywhere because later in the show we'll talk to Coach Skrowski and give you the first look at Elon's 2015 football team. Stay tuned. An Elon education is about preparing students for a life of global citizenship. Of course this is a place where you're going to come and earn a degree, but it's also a place that's going to get you to think very deeply about how you're going to use that degree to make the world a better place. Through their daily pursuit of excellence, Elon student athletes have gained recognition for their achievements, both on and off the field. 
Building a winning tradition takes hard work and dedication. Dedication to the maroon life. Where success is not only measured by just wins and trophies, but also by the knowledge we gain. At Elon, we're more than just athletes. We're student athletes. Providing support enables success. Help sustain the winning tradition of Elon Athletics while securing the future of our student athletes for years to come. What is living the maroon life? It's more than just the hustle and the sweat. It's more than just the pain and the frustration. It's more than just the triumph and the glory. The maroon life is you. Yes, you. You, the athlete, striving to be at your best day in and day out. You, the alumni who have been in the stands supporting Elon for years. You, the fans who stream into games hours before kickoff. And you, the little ones who will be the next generation of Phoenix fans. You are what drives Elon Athletics. And you are the reason we do what we do. There is so much history and tradition behind our maroon. Conference title, all American, and national championship. But there is so much history and tradition yet to be made. So join us. Live the maroon life. Welcome back to the Elon Phoenix Weekly on your ESPN2 local sports break. This spring, the men's soccer team took their talents across the Atlantic to Spain for a little fun and some competition. With the demands of being a student athlete, it can be hard to study abroad. However, Elon makes it a priority as they gave the men's soccer team the unique opportunity to spend their spring break in Spain. Of course, when you go anywhere new, you take in all the sights. You see the country the best you can, you take tours, and you hang out on the beach if you can. The trip was much more than a vacation, however, as they had a mission. Of course, they're a soccer team in one of the biggest soccer capitals in the world. As a team, they received an opportunity to play some of the Spanish teams in a scrimmage, they got to watch the national team practice, and the icing on the cake, going to see the El Clasico, the biggest rivalry in the world between FC Barcelona and Real Madrid.
players mentioned that the whole trip was an amazing learning experience from a soccer's perspective, citing that the Spanish players have a much different style of play than Americans. According to the players, Americans play with force and strength. They want to outmuscle you and will power their way through a match. Meanwhile, the Spanish use more tactical plays, more strategy, and a little more finesse. The team played a total of two scrimmages against Junio Yabak Terrasa and Rayo Vallecano. The team won and tied each game respectively. So when put to the test, the team proved that they can run with the competition and keep up with the Spanish style of play. And while leaving a mark is great, the team learned how to overcome barriers and come together with their opponents through the game they love. The team was very happy with the experience overall and hope to take what they learned back into their play next season and improve as a squad together. Many players mentioned they would love to go back and will always remember what this experience meant to them. With Coach Little stating, he would love to take his team back as soon as he can. What did you do over spring break? Was it anywhere near as cool as ziplining, surfing, playing with kids, and playing soccer in Costa Rica? Because while the men were in Europe, Elon women's soccer team spent their break in tropical paradise. Let's take a look at just what was going on way down in Central America. Over spring break, the women's soccer team had the opportunity to take a trip down to Costa Rica. While there, they got to not only improve their skills on the field, but expose themselves to the diverse Costa Rican culture. One of the first adventures for the athletes was a daunting 30-kilometer whitewater rafting trip down the Pacuare River that included Class 3 and 4 rapids. Sophomore midfielder Sarah Henson wrote that Nicole Denian took home the trophy for the earliest fall into the water while junior Katie Boyle secured the most total falls into the river. The next day was highlighted by the presence of the Arenal Volcano. As Henson describes it, we were lucky to experience a clear day and have a full view of the volcano. The trip continued to provide excitement for the athletes as day five consisted of surfing. Defenseman Katie Boyle shared her thoughts on how soccer skills translate into surfing skills. She recounts, we all did well and a lot of us were able to stand up and ride the entire wave. The team then made their way to a local elementary school, where they donated school supplies and were lucky enough to get to watch the kids perform traditional Costa Rican dances. The team was then invited to dance along. The final adventure of the trip consisted of a visit to the capital city of San Jose. Junior midfielder Taylor Glenn shares her thoughts on the team's experience in the city, writing, We saw the Teatro Nacional, coffee beans growing on the side of the street, dancing characters playing music that seemed to pop out of the ground at every corner, and quite a large number of frightening clowns. As far as the soccer portion of the trip goes, the players had the opportunity to play two matches, as well as hold multiple team practices. In those two matches, Elon defeated the U-17 through U-20 Costa Rican national team 2-0 and tied Arenal de Coronado. Finally, as the trip wound down, Taylor Glenn provided the final update, writing, Hopefully we can rub off on our peers some of the Pura Vida culture we adopted in Costa Rica. Let's hope the team shares a little of that Pura Vida with us as they continue to prep for the fall. 
Stay tuned for more Elon Phoenix Weekly after the break. What is living the maroon life? It's more than just the hustle and the sweat. It's more than just the pain and the frustration. It's more than just the triumph and the glory. The maroon life is you. Yes, you. You, the athlete striving to be at your best day in and day out. You, the alumni who have been in the stands supporting Elon for years. You, the fans who stream into games hours before kickoff. And you, the little ones who will be the next generation of Phoenix fans. You are what drives Elon Athletics, and you are the reason we do what we do. There is so much history and tradition behind our maroon. Conference titles, all American, and national championships. But there is so much history and tradition yet to be made. So join us. Live the maroon life. An Elon education is about preparing students for a life of global citizenship. Of course, this is a place where you're going to come and earn a degree, but it's also a place that's going to get you to think very deeply about how you're going to use that degree to make the world a better place. Through their daily pursuit of excellence, Elon student athletes have gained recognition for their achievements, both on and off the field. Building a winning tradition takes hard work and dedication. Dedication to the maroon life. Where success is not only measured by just wins and trophies, but also by the knowledge we gain. At Elon, we're more than just athletes. student athletes. Providing support enables success, helps sustain the winning tradition of Elon Athletics while securing the future of our student athletes for years to come. The Elon Phoenix Weekly is made possible by the students of the School of Communications in association with the dedicated coaches, athletes, and staff of Elon Athletics. Next, we caught up with Elon football coach Riz Strosky, as well as cornerback Connor Christensen and linebacker John Silas to see how spring practices are going and learn about the team's new motto.
There's like an energy to this team, you know, I love it. You know, I wasn't here last spring, but like during the fall, you know, it maybe wasn't as like upbeat as it is, as it is now. And um, just like in the meeting rooms, there's a different kind of vibe to it. So far, it's good. It's early. We're just in our first week. We just finished up our, our third practice. It was the first practice where we had shoulder pads on, but the energy level has been good. Now it's really a great opportunity to work on the details and work on the technique. There is a noticeably different change in culture on and off the field for the Phoenix this year. What's the secret? Coach Skrowski and quarterback Connor Christensen point to a new team motto. When I got here, you know, uh, embrace the grind, and that will still continue to be, you know, our, our, our kind of mantra, you know, go out every day and embrace the grind. But I kind of wanted to give it to the players a little bit and let them take ownership. And what they came up with was take action. And um, ultimately the leadership council came together and we picked take action. And They spoke in front of the team before we started uh, spring practice and I said, define what that means to your teammates. And basically what they said was this, you are accountable for your actions on and off the field and take action of them, you know, and be responsible for them. It's really just, you know, you gotta take care of yourselves. You gotta do what you gotta do. And it, like, just go out there and get the job done. You know, I'm glad that they took ownership of that. And it's a good model really for anybody. The Phoenix's defense struggled last season, but middle linebacker John Silas is already seeing vast improvements this spring. Right now we, we have much better continuity. Like all the coaches came back. So we with the same playbook. So now instead of just worrying about the calls, everybody's getting better with the technique. That'll make us a better team. So that's really helping. And we do a lot of individual time. So we can like work one-on-one -on -one with our position coaches to get our technique better so that during when we actually scrimmage and when we play games in the fall, we'll be able to just move faster. On the other side of the ball, starting quarterback candidate Connor Christensen also likes what he sees from the up-tempo offense Coach Skrowski features. This is looking, it's looking pretty good. Just for start, we've only got about 60% of our offense installed and um, it's just like, it, it's fun. It's definitely new uh, for me because in high school, I huddled up every, every play. And so now it's, there's been a lot of time like meetings with Ben Zyle and, uh, and Coach Grosky in terms of learning it and getting a grasp of it and everything's quicker. You gotta look over to um, the sideline for, for the signal. There's days where we get better and days we have setbacks and that, that's, that's what we have to eliminate the step, setbacks. You're not gonna fix any, any organization, whether it's a football team or a business that, that is in not great shape when you come, you're not gonna fix it in a day but you gotta make sure you're taking the strides to get it right every day. And that's really what, what we've been living for. There's no question though, winning this year is, is it's on in a premium, and, but we gotta understand how to win. It's not just talking about it, it's about coming out each day, whether it's in the weight room, in the classroom, on the campus or on the practice field, we gotta make sure we win that day. I think this team has an energy about it. Uh, I think it's a tighter knit team. You know, when you go in the locker room, when you're waiting on meetings, uh, I definitely sense there's an energy. After a productive winter and an exciting start to the spring, Elon players and coaches are eager to show the community what next season can offer. I want this program to be an inclusive program. I, I don't want it to be our program and you're on the outside. I want this community, and I'm talking about you guys as students, the faculty, the staff on this community, Alamance County, Burlington, I want them to be included in it. With the positive energy behind it, you know that we actually, we believe, you know, we're going to be successful. Man, we've been working really hard and we're sorry for disappointing y'all last year, but if y'all come out, it'll be a whole nother story this year. So far, so good from Phoenix Camp. Elon opens up its regular season at Wake Forest on September 3rd. It looks like we have a lot to look forward to next season. If you missed anything or want to watch it again, be sure to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash Elon Phoenix Weekly. You can also catch us on Time Warner Cable to watch us on demand. Also, be sure to visit elonphoenix.com to learn more about upcoming games and exciting successes for Elon Athletics. And be sure to tune in next week when we meet the softball team's standout freshman. On behalf of our producers and crew here at the show, we hope you continue to have a spectacular weekend. For the Elon Phoenix Weekly, I'm Tori Baptist. And I'm Stephen Normington. Live the Maroon Life.